Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is HD. And this is Pain User. We're back for game number three between Moon versus Huck. Booyah! And this is from the DreamHack 2011 Finals. And it is going to be on Crossfire for game three. Uh, so far, the series is tied up 1 1, and both these players showing that they are quite, quite talented. And if you guys don't know who Moon or Huck are, Look it up in your history books. I think in game one I said like in Moon your history was a, books. I think I think I said in game one Moon was like a professional StarCraft player. He's actually a professional Warcraft three he player. Is indeed. Yeah, and Huck, of course, actually no one knew him back in in Brood War. No. He claims to have been an A plus or A minus on IC Cup, which I mean I believe he's 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 a pro man. He's I great. Mean, he's a very talented player. Extremely. He's put in enough time that he certainly could have equalized the gap, even if he wasn't an A level. Icy Cup player, uh, he's he's put enough yeah. regardless, hard work. Regardless, that, he is now in an S. He is now an S class player. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about it. He is an S class player now for certain. Uh, great micro, great macro, good decision making. Mm. And we might once again have Moon opening pool first here. He has not gone for a hatch first yet in any of these games. Yeah, I I don't think that he can open hatch first. I don't think on you the can maps that On the maps that have been played already, because the ESL Shakuris Plateau dictates that it's one versus one. And anytime you play on a 1v1 style map where you know where your opponent's going to spawn, the Protoss can easily block the hatchery with a probe. Oh, and look how annoying he's being with that probe, just continuing oh. to block the mining of the minerals. And that's just one of those little things that separates good players from great players. And it's small things like that that just annoy your opponent. He's continuing to deny the mining. There yep. we go. Finally, Moon using a drone to get that probe the heck out of there. And man, Huck is so annoying with those scouting probes. I can tell you, even yep. from back in the day when I used to play with him, just so irritating with that scouting probe. And for those of you guys who are wondering what exactly is Huck doing here, only one worker can mine from a mineral patch at a time. So what Huck is doing is mining the mineral patch and preventing the drone from mining on it. And effectively, I think he's done at least 40 minerals, maybe not 40, but maybe like 25 minerals of damage already. Yep, and he's decided that it is time to get out of there, so he finally grabs five minerals that will be permanently stolen from Moon. What a gangster. And he's going to head back to the base and deposit those back at his own nexus. <laughs> and that also, uh, you know, allows your scouting probe to, to get a little bit extra done out of the scouting mission. Not only is he scouting, he's going to bring them back bring back home some minerals for later on in the game. One thing I've noticed too is pro gamers will actually, on a map that fields gold minerals, they'll bring the scouting probe out and get some gold minerals. Why not? Back. Why not? I mean, just a little extra bonus and a uh, little extra cash for later on. The probe's working hard, man. He doesn't want to be a scouting probe all his life because <laughs> they, they run a high risk uh, to reward ratio. They're, they're not very safe, so to say. Yeah, no, no, no. Probes outside of the mineral line are never safe. Yep. But they are the hero probes. Yeah, that's true. There and now he's to be, come back home. To... <laughs> All his probe friends are like, "You're back!" And he <laughs> gets to he gets to work happily, telling in the stories of Moon's base and the horrors of the Zerg swarm and how terrifying it is. Did you ever read that drone story on TL? No. Oh, dude, it was awesome. Well, we're gonna have to read it together someday. It was I'll like the life of a drone. The life of a drone. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. I awesome. wanted to become a spawning pool, but <laughs> then I was forced to make a hatchery. <laughs> I'd rather be a hatchery than a spawning pool, man. Look at that. That's disgusting. It's I like you know. got a zit coming out of you. Oh, That's dude. <laughs> I'll see you all day long. <laughs> that is kind of what Zerg are like, I guess. But <laughs> look at Huck going with this one base style. But he's not going to be four-gating this game. It's going to be a three-gate three gate yep. expand. He already has uh, the sentry. And another sentry is about to pop out right now. So he's going to have two sentries and a zealot. And I think he's going to just sentry expand here. Going to safely, safely expand and eventually wall off. Uh, and take that natural expansion. And on a map like this, uh, where Colossus are just so effective, we're probably going to see him do some sort of a timing push off of two base, maybe uh, five to seven gate, um, seven gate robo. We've been seeing that as well. And if that doesn't work out, then he's going to transition into Colossus. And Colossus, just so amazing on a map like this with all the cliffs and Absolutely. short chokes. Yeah, uh, typically on a map like this, very Terran favored because of the you know the plateaus the small ledges but in a map which is zerg versus protoss uh on this map i, I feel like you're, you're absolutely right colossus sentries anything that can block off that does well in closed environments uh it's just going to be so good for for protoss and for huck in general so huck is going to absolutely go with mass sentries transitioning into colossus yeah. and the uh the onus the Onus is on Moon to figure oh, out. Nos. What, oh, Nos. Oh, Nos. He's going to have to figure out what he's going to do against Huck's playstyle. Yeah, that's so true. And also on this map, if if there's any map that I would say is, is 
bad for Zerg. It would probably be this one. This, mm. this would be my least favorite map as a Zerg player. Although the only well, the only Zerg player that I have managed seen do work on this map is Rhett. Rhett <laughs> can take people out. He can beat Terrans. He can beat Protoss, yeah. and he's really good about using all of the back alleys on the map and those those weird attack angles that you're not expecting. Because there are a few r routes on this map that aren't convention conventionally taken and mm. Rhett just uses those so well sets up these huge flanks and he's able to beat top class players yeah little did you guys know that there's actually backdoor rocks into the main in this map and it doesn't get used that often but for a player hardly ever yeah for a player who's really in tune with the map and maybe when it gets to the super late game this is an advantage for zerg yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can you can sneak through the back with speed links. Mm -hmm. uh, another route that people really use is the one that comes in to the left of the natural. Uh, that back route right there, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so good if you just wait for the Protoss player to move out. Then you can launch a speed link counterattack, yeah. uh, get into the natural. Speaking and it looks which, like he might even be setting up for that oh, right now. Roach. I love it when you just guess right sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. I think he's also setting up for a <laughs> flank here. He might hit both positions at the same time. And it looks like that is what he's going to do. There are so many sentries out for Huck, though. And oh, oh, he gets the links in from behind. And he is going to take out some of these sentries. Oh, this is horrible for Huck. Huck finally uh, releasing some more emergency force fields at the very last second, but will he have enough to defend against this? I don't know. His sentries are safe for now, but those links are quickly dispatched to go after the sentries, and if all these sentries go down, no oh, matter which way you no. swing it, this is going to be disastrous for us. So many sentries going down, and this is at such an important time in the game where Huck really needs to keep all of those alive. I think Huck oh. will be able to hold here. He's pulling all of the probes off yeah. the line. He is going to hold. No, reinforcement links coming in right now. He is going to start to lose quite a few probes here and he cannot afford to take these losses. Moon is just coming up huge right now, and he still hasn't managed to equalize the Harvester count, so Moon investing so much in army here, not able to quite equalize it. Huck actually doing a great job holding here, sending a single Zealot to the bottom right to so deny smart. that third. So intelligent. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a while throughout the battle, he realizes that there is a possibility that the Zerg player will be expanding behind the aggression, sends a Zealot down there, but what is Huck going to do about this right here at his front door? Is he going to be able to hold probes fighting in the south, sentries and stalkers fighting in the north, and it looks like the probes able to take out that unit down south, and now are able to help out the main army, and Huck, despite losing all of his sentries, despite losing several workers, he is still even in the harvester count, he is going to be able to deny this hatchery, and I think Huck is going to hold onto the front door, what a Protoss player. Yeah, this is an impressive hold right here, uh, uh, some of the best I've seen, I mean, just perfect force fields. Perfect scrambling, pulling his probes at the right time. He ha He's not out of deep water he even yet. Pulls the zealot back. He's man. not out of deep water yet, though. He has those links running into the main. They're going to continue to kill probes, and he is taking some heavy losses here. He is managing to stay alive, though. He's just holding on by the skin of his teeth. More <laughs> units reinforcing here, and wow, this is just such an intense match right here. That would not be dentist prescribed to hold on by the skin of your teeth. No, it would not. Yes, that would be quite. Deadly. That'd be like the, your gums. Yeah, man. That's that saying hard. never made sense to me. It works sometimes. <laughs> well, Huck is holding on for uh, for now, but he's losing more probes inside the main, and he cannot afford to lose any of these workers with more speedlings coming in. From oh Moon. my Moon god! Moon is just keeping the aggression on, and I gotta say, also, we gotta talk about the other side of things. Moon is playing a brilliant game of StarCraft here keeping the aggression on players when most players would opt to just fall back and play macro. Yeah, but one huge mistake is that Moon did not divert the attention to save that third. Yeah. He let the third go down to a single zealot, and that is just a huge mistake on his part. I don't know what he was thinking right there. I agree with you, man. I mean, most players, you know, they'd realize, hey, my hatchery's under attack. I just need to send four zerglings down there, and I can save it. Yeah, but he didn't. So Oh, and these oh! stalkers might get caught here. Moon actually might come up huge. I don't know why he was going after the zealots there. He had the stalkers trapped in. Oh, I think, I think he was going after the sentries. Very indecisive right there. Moon losing quite a few lings, not really able to accomplish anything. And Huck actually looks for the first time to have a sizable army, and he's looking relatively safe, and it looks like he's going to start to tech up to Colossus here. Yeah, we were talking about this before. Once Huck is able to position himself with the natural and get sentries out, he will go into Colossus on a map like this. We can see Robotics Facility coming up right now. His sentry count has been remustered, and I think 
all is well in the land of the Protoss. Order has been established here. Order has been established back in Ire. <laughs> and wow, we do have a little sneak attack coming in. And he is going to destroy those back wow. rocks and possibly sneak in there. I don't know if Huck's going to be able to see this. Does he see it with the pylon? Is that enough scouting? Yep. Oh, and he does see just one lane yep. on the outside. And that's terrible. He will be able to stop that. He's going to send those stalkers back and prevent that from going down. And that's so too bad because Moon, I feel like, really needs to make something happen here uh, in order to, to get some serious damage done to Huck because he invested so much in that attack. And it looks like he's actually investing quite a bit more in another attack here. We have more roaches coming mm. and we have more links coming, but the roaches still don't have speed. Well, the thing here is Moon is trying to play an aggressive game. He realizes that if he gets into a mid or late game situation against Huck on this map, it is going to be disastrous simply yeah. because of the way the map is designed. So he's trying to keep the pressure on and not allow Huck to get into Colossus. So he's constantly trading armies. He's constantly keeping Huck on the back foot. And all the while, he's still playing that macro game in the background. So I really think Moon is playing the optimum strategy here for defeating a Protoss player on Crossfire. Now, the thing here, though, is Huck has mustered up a sizable force and he is pushing out. And Huck... He has a five-star safety rating with his forces, man. I think he's going to abuse the terrain to its maximum potential, and I don't know what Moon can do about that. Huck has indeed mustered up quite an army here, mm. and he does have that sentry count back. He has a bunch of stalkers, and Moon, not really with that much of an army. He is being scouted by that hallucinated phoenix of Huck. Yep. He is going to try and sneak into the natural here and do a little bit of damage. There are two cannons up for Huck. They might be able to hold here. I think they will actually be able to hold. Those are going to try and head into the main. No, they're not going to make it. And Huck now finally pushing towards the natural. No, he's actually going to head back. Yeah, I Looks think, like he's worried about a counterattack. I think those lings actually may have saved Moon from a disastrous battle because it actually ended up pulling Huck's forces back and allowing Moon to buy more time for more forces. We can see Hydras and Lynx now on the way out of the hatcheries. But it looks like Huck, oh, Moon here, engaging with some of his Lynx in the front. Those Lynx are like Leroy Lincolns. And they ended up all dying. I love how you just randomly named specific units after Leroy Jenkins. It's great. <laughs> they, that's it. That is what they were like. They were getting a little overzealous there. Those yeah. lings just trying to run up to the entire Protoss force, not even able to get a swipe off before they're just vaporized. Mm. And uh, Huck just kind of hanging out right now, not really willing to commit one way or another. He's waiting for these immortals to get into the mix, but I think the longer he waits here, the more powerful Moon is getting. Moon taking his fourth. It's actually up now, and Moon trying to find a different attack route, looking to work the left side of the map, and Huck seems to be all over this. He is anticipating uh, Moon's every move. He has his army in perfect position, and we might have a battle on our hands in a few seconds here. Yeah, we may have the uh, epic clash here that we've been waiting for, a big battle between the Protoss and the Zerg. One changeling here, he's been sent out. Oh, I thought Huck didn't notice that, but it is going to oh be a big boy, battle in the middle. Oh, boy, here we go. Oh, Moon coming in here with a lot of roaches and hydrogen. Here comes the speedlings. Huck with more force fields, wisely saving energy on the, energy, on the force fields so he can drop more down, and Huck back to into a corner. He does not have blink, so he I cannot think escape. Huck's in trouble yeah, I think here. Huck may be in a bit of a disastrous situation, but Moon is running in with more reinforcements well. As well, he's got nowhere to go. His yeah. back is against the wall. He's stuck at this Zelnaga tower. He can't even micro his units right now. Look, he's not even moving them because there's no point. He has nowhere to go. He trapped himself against the Zelnaga, tried to hold that position, and he just lost everything. And Moon flooding in with more lings, more hydras. I don't know how Huck is going to be able to hold on here. This is going to be the coup de grace from Moon, and he's just working straight into the natural right now with everything he has. Yeah, absolutely. Huck here to force into a back corner. He needs more sentries. He needs to hold off this ramp here because that's a lot of roaches and hydras and lings. Moon taking a decisive victory in the middle of the game, leading into a possible victory in game three here. He, some of his force is getting force fielded off. It looks like Huck is trying to hang on once again by the skin of his gums of his teeth. <laughs> and it looks like he can't do it. 170 to a 72 supply right there. GG called by Huck. And Huck has left the game. That's game three, but it's not over yet, man. Yep. This is the DreamHack 2011 Summer Finals, which means there are more games to come. Series 2-1 right now. Yeah. Boon. So impressive. I know, man. He was playing the uber-aggressive. He was playing the God of War style. 
Yeah, okay. absolutely. Very July Zerg esque style styles, of play yeah. right there. It's just macro or aggression. And he picked the aggression style and it paid off brilliantly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the beautiful thing about players who can use the aggressive style is that they also know when to macro. They'll yeah. use the aggression to allow them to macro. And I think that's what a lot of Zerg players are starting to realize now is that it's not just all about drone, 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 drone. Yeah. Sit back and drone all day. I mean, there's a new style of play, and, and it's working out for a lot of players. I need to study these reps, man, because I'm still on the drone, drone, drone tip. <laughs> yeah, so are a lot of people, man. All right. But well, anyway, if you guys enjoyed the cast, be sure and check us out. You can find me at twitter.com slash pain user, and you can also find me at youtube.com slash stratbunker. And you guys can find me at youtube.com slash hdstarcraft. And, of course, I am now Twittering and tweeting. You guys can follow my conversations tweet, at twitter.com at hdstarcraft or twitter.com slash hdstarcraft. And also make sure to check out the uh, IGN Pro League Season 2 main event starts in, well, if you guys are listening to this video, it probably started already. So go check it out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Going to be a lot of great games casted by myself and HD and yeah. some of our co-casters and casters from all over the world. So. Yeah. Uh, you guys should love it. It's going to be great. Check it out. Don't miss it. And we will be right back with Game 4. All right. Stay tuned.